Juvenile onset Huntington's disease is an uncommon form of an uncommon disease. So we think that somewhere between five and 10% of people with Huntington's disease have onset before age 18 or 20. And that's what we refer to as juvenile onset Huntington's disease. Um, the symptoms of juvenile onset Huntington's disease can be a little bit different than the typical symptoms in an adult with the disease. The younger a child is when the uh, disease symptoms begin, the less likely they are to have chorea. The more likely they are to have uh, rigidity or dystonia, stiffness or um, uh, um, cramping type of movements, almost a Parkinson-like appearance. Those type of motor symptoms are actually more common than chorea in a very young child uh, who's beginning with Huntington's disease. Behavioral issues often are a big issue in, in uh, people with adolescent or teenage onset Huntington's disease. Sometimes it can be hard to distinguish that from normal teenagers, um, who I think most parents would think are having behavioral problems. Um, so uh, um, on the other hand, children with Huntington's disease are often recognized as having a problem much earlier than an adult because children are going to school, they're being tested constantly. So, so and whether it's a, a cognitive test like a, a um, math test or an English test, or whether it's a physical test such as going to the gym and participating in sports, kids are being um, sort of graded and compared on a regular basis. And so it's pretty easy to tell if there's a fall off in a child's performance. That would be a, a, a clue that the child might be developing juvenile onset Huntington's disease if there's a change in their motor function, a change in their, in their cognitive performance. Um, when the changes are behavioral, they tend to be quite dramatic. They're not subtle, mild irritability, but rather dramatic. Um, alcohol or drug abuse at age 12 or burning down the school building or things like that that are really quite dramatic. Um, uh, and not all children who have these kinds of symptoms are going to turn out to have juvenile onset Huntington's disease. Recall that these children are quite likely to have inherited the abnormal gene from their father. It's much more common for a child with Huntington's disease to have an affected father than an affected mother for reasons that have to do with how the gene uh, mutation changes um, from, from parent to child. Um, so this is gonna be a family that's, that's in some degree of turmoil um, because there's a father with Huntington's disease who may or may not even be at home anymore, a mother who's trying to manage the father's severe illness and also trying to manage the family. So, so behavioral changes or changes in school performance may not reflect that the person has, that the child has Huntington's disease, but may reflect a challenging family situation. Um, and of course, being in a Huntington's family doesn't prevent children from having other problems that are completely unrelated to Huntington's disease. So our usual recommendation is not to immediately do a gene test for Huntington's disease in a child who's having behavioral problems or, or school problems, but rather to treat the issues at hand, to get some counseling, to get some support for the child, to treat depression, to treat whatever the symptoms are, and then follow up with the patient in six months or a year. If this is Huntington's disease, despite the best treatment, there will be progression um, over, over six months or two years. Um, and so the diagnosis can be made at that point or a gene test can be done at that point. Um, but remember that children in a Huntington's disease family are, are living in a stressful environment. Uh, and, and as a clinician, if you're treating somebody, an adult who has Huntington's disease, I think it's important to be uh, thoughtful about the children in the family and to offer them some type of support or counseling. Mm -hmm.